It's not a secret to anyone that new players mash. It's to be expected that people learning a new fighting game don't know what they can or can't do when defending. Mashing too much can definitely impede on your growth as a player, but mashing can be an important form of limit testing. You do it enough times and you gather information on whether or not you should do it again in that situation. Of course, new players don't usually think about this yet, but they'll come around eventually if they keep at it. During this period of time, most new players are executing bad mashes. A bad mash is an absolutely uninformed press of a button on defense. This is a guess in its truest fashion, completely removed from context in the game. This definition will make more sense in a bit. As a player puts more time into the game and understands the threats and structure behind a character's pressure, they begin to respect the opponent's offense a lot more. But in the same way that too much mashing can lose you games, so can too much blocking. Giving an opponent too much respect can be a surefire way to lose the game, especially in a series like Guilty Gear that heavily incentivizes you to challenge. This takes us to high-level players. High-level players use Abare. Abare is a fancy way to say defensive mashing, so what I'm trying to say is that high-level players mash. But not in the same way that beginners do. High-level players don't just guess with a mash, they largely consider the context of the situation. What are the follow-up options and which do mashing beat? How much damage am I taking if I guess wrong? What's my reward for guessing right? These are the questions that high-level players are asking themselves when they choose to mash. When they have answers to these questions and can make informed decisions to go for a mash, regardless of whether or not they were correct, it was a good mash. So what is a good mash? A good mash is when you're using contextual information to make an informed decision and guess with a button on defense. So how do we apply this to our own game? The first step is identifying situations that can be mashed to begin with. Often this will be at a place where an opponent likes to reset pressure or go for a mix-up option. Note that the opponent can make this difficult for you by changing the spot they reset pressure, but that's just part of the game. The next step is picking a button to challenge with. This is a super important, often overlooked step that will drastically change the results of your mash. In this example, I am challenging Angie with Gold Lewis 5P, and this button accounts for three out of the four Angie Fujin follow-ups. The most optimal way to find these kinds of tricks is to lab it out for yourself or copy the way that strong players mash in certain situations. Note for Backpack, when you're editing this, show your own Twitch channel. Let's take a look at a real game situation where I got mashed on. In this case, this Nagoryuki mashed throw while I was plus 12 at close range, which sounds ridiculous at face value, but it's going to make more sense why it's a good mash as we provide more context. Let's revisit those questions from earlier. What are the follow-up options and what does mashing beat? The common follow-ups in the situations that I like to use are close slash as a frame trap, 2D as a frame trap, 684 as a true string, 2S as a way to catch backdash, and throw to catch them blocking. So which options does mashing beat? Well, it beats run up 2S, which is what I went for in this situation. It also beats run up throw in that we would have gotten a tech. Note that this option of a uh, mashing throw there is neutral to 684 because it's a true string and you'll just be forced to block. So what does it lose to? Obviously, it loses to a frame trap. The common frame traps that I use in this situation are close slash and 2D. Finally, you want to consider how often the opponent goes for the various options. Remember that a 1 in 5 options doesn't mean that it's a 20% chance to occur. Someone could go for one of these 5 options 90% of the time, which you should consider into your decision making. The next question you should ask yourself is how much damage am I taking if I guess wrong? You're pretty much using this situation to gauge whether or not you will survive the next combo or if the situation is winnable after you eat that combo. Well, in this situation, you're not actually at too much risk for getting hit. If Gold Lewis frame traps with 2D, he doesn't get much reward because he doesn't have meter. Let's show the different combos that Gold Lewis can do with and without meter from a 2D. It's a different story if he goes for run up close slash because he does get a lot more reward even without meter. But Nago still has the safety net of burst. So what's my reward for guessing right? In this case, you have a lot of reward for guessing right. Gold Lewis has no meter and isn't close to getting burst. 
where Nago has two bars. If Nago guesses right, he will get a hard knockdown with great Oki and it will have two bars to extend pressure with RC. Guessing right is a direct path to victory here. The final question that we ask ourselves is, does this situation warrant a mash? Our answer is, given that we have a decent chance of being correct and the risk reward is greatly skewed in our favor, this situation does warrant a mash. Once you've considered the context, the decision is only one button away. By the way, don't worry if you can't answer these questions all the time, that's completely fine. We don't all have perfect information on every situation in Guilty Gear Strive, but what's important is that you're asking yourself these questions to begin with and taking note of what works and what doesn't so that your limit testing can help you long term. Note that you can expedite this process by doing some simple labbing. Consider checking out my How to Lab video for more information. Instead of mashing and praying it all works out, make informed decisions on your own defense by considering context when you're mashing. A good mash isn't a mash that works. It's a mash that works more often than it doesn't over a long period of time. Make sure that when you're pressing buttons, it's a calculated risk and not a shot in the dark. And that's all I've got. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Consider checking out my other videos on this channel. I promise you, they're all good stuff. I also stream every single day on Twitch. I've also got a community Discord that's a great way to interact with this wonderful community, as well as myself and get notifications on future streams and videos. I've also got a Patreon if you want to support the content that I make monetarily. I've also got a Twitter where I tweet almost every single day. Anyways, that's all I've got. Until next time, bye bye